lights out. All right. So when I'm going to just isolate the cloud right here, all right. First thing I'm going to do, okay, is I bring the feet together and then I pull up and push out while leaning. I pull up a little bit and then I push out while leaning, and then I come up on my knees. Okay. Once I'm here, see that that's a lever. It's a progressive lever, right? Because I don't want to lift with my back, even if she's small, smaller than me. I don't want to lift with my back. And then I step into my lunge, and then I use these feet to actually help me come up, you know, into this position. Now she's kind of close to the edge of the mat, so I wouldn't do the plow on her here. What I'm going to do is catch the back of the ankles and just come down till I feel the weight. And then I'm going to do uh, a pull, make the letter S with kind of a wiggle. So I'm going to go here, and she comes right down. Okay? Uh, even a very large person will scoot like that. If you pull like that, they'll slide because you break friction. And they go. If you just try to pull, they're very heavy. If you do that little S curve, they just down they go. All right. Now from here, I'm going to walk all the way around. Be careful not to stand on the hair. I learned a long time ago my clients don't like it when I stand on their hair. So I try to avoid it. Now, see where I'm at right now? See how I went 180 degrees? So I'm facing back this way, holding the back of the heels here, not holding the feet holding the back of the heels and then what I'm going to do is step back in a nice deep lunge. So I just step back in a nice deep lunge. Doesn't mean a whole lot to her but see I've changed my position 180 degrees from kneeling over there to kneeling over here. Okay now the first thing I'm going to do is very gently well first thing I'm going to do is understand that a plow okay uh, is a back is a uh, sorry is a forward bend okay it's just at a different angle than you're used to seeing it so if your client can do a forward bend if they can do a seated forward bend then they can at least start to do the plow they may not be able to go all the way depending on how good their forward bend is but the difference is the plow emphasizes more uh, a different part of the back than when you're sitting. See, rotating in, in uh, geometry, geography, but rotating in attitude, okay, from up to down and on the side, etc., because of gravity, changes where the emphasis in the same posture is. So if you do the same posture facing up and then do the same posture laying on your side and then do the same posture facing down this is a very different effect mm. and what is uh, changing the effect of course is gravity the role of gravity and where is the center line going through the body and in what order is the line going into the body okay so now I take a nice deep breath right because I have more control as I exhale and initially, I don't pull down. See, just like the rule in uh, uh, yoga asanas for forward bend, you don't bend down. You project forward. Okay? So here's the projection is where I rock the feet toward me. See? That's the projection. As I rock the feet toward me, and then once I get here, I let it come over as far as it will go comfortably and just adjust. Now, if I need to back up more, I just back up more, right? And now what I want to do is pull her up on her shoulders. Oh. And then let the feet drop. I don't force them down. Hmm. Now, if she's been doing a lot of these postures, she may be able to relax her knees and let her knees go down toward her head. Mm -hmm. Okay, now just bear with me for a second because I'm moving a little slower because I'm demonstrating. But I would come right over here and let go of the feet. 
okay? Because I can actually give her a little rocking motion to help her release these legs into this posture. So if she has this posture, I can facilitate it even more, okay? But most people, you're not gonna be able to do that. I was just wanted to show you that there's an opportunity there for your advanced yogis, and they like it, right? <laughs> and now, to come out, I don't lift. I keep constant pressure on the heels, not pushing them or forcing them down, wherever they are. If they're up here, that's fine. But I don't lift to come out. What I do is I project forward and I visualize rolling that spine out one vertebrae at a time as I, as I push forward. I'm not lifting. Now, there will be a natural lift, but that's not me. I'm pushing forward. And when I get forward enough that the low back and the sacrum come to the floor, okay, right there I can come up and I can walk around. You get it? Yeah. So, and also, you know, so I'm taking care of myself. I'm not straining my back because even though she's light as a feather, okay, not light as your feather, but light as a feather, okay, uh, I practice my body mechanics as if the person I'm moving is actually uh, quite heavy <clears throat> or quite large or quite long. And then I kind of adjust back a little bit, turn the volume down a little bit appropriate for the actual resistance that's there or actual range of motion. Now, uh, plow, just like any yoga posture, is a concept. There is actually no range of motion that's appropriate for it. In spite of what you might see in a magazine or in spite of what you might see uh, some video or some yoga teacher doing, the, the concept is a way that you orient the body between heaven and earth. And it's not about range of motion. It's about projection of consciousness. And so when I'm taking someone into a plow, let's say all I can do is get their feet up in the air. That's as far as we can go. Okay? What I do is, I, as soon as I hit that point of resistance, I pause in the physical in the RL, okay, and I continue that motion in the virtual, the inner visualization, until I bang their feet on the floor over their head. And then I do the appropriate extension, and then I take them out, and then when my visualization meets back up with real life, where their feet happen to be, way over here, then I just continue the real life motion as if we had done the whole thing to the floor and back. So what I'm doing is intrinsically, I'm imparting the full possible range of motion that would be um, possible with an advanced person with, with no injuries and no inhibitions and no whatever, right? Even in someone who can barely move.